Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and let's start from the front lines review. Unfortunately, Russian forces moved forward a little today as well in a very critical direction. I would say let's switch to the color mode over here for you to see the advancement of the Russian army. So it was yesterday and it is today. You may see they took all of those quartals in this place. Those are mostly private buildings, maximum twin-story buildings, but anyways, you may see that they are very close to the very critical road for Ukrainian supplies. And I would say that they already cut this road, unfortunately, because it's not useful. The fight from this road is just a few meters away, maybe 50 meters or something like that one building across, one field across, so it's nothing. It means that the only reliable supply line in this area is over here between Severna and Avdivka. As I say to you, this road is kind of not good, but still could be used for supplies for Ukrainian army in Avdivka. For how long it could be used, I'm not sure. But this was the main road for Ukrainian army and unfortunately it is unusable. Yesterday I told you that it is time for Ukrainian army to withdraw the forces from Avdivka, at least heavy equipment. For now I'm not really sure because I spoke with one of my mates who is not far away from Avdivka and he said to me that they have supply line. Maybe he said about this one or maybe something else, but he said that there is a reliable supply line, not just this road. I'm out of clue what is that, but those are the great news, I may say. So delivering new supplies, new ammunition to our forces and rotation is also possible. Ukraine may also use this part of the road to supply the factory and Russia struggles to get it under control. For them it would be much harder than to occupy Avdivka, so I think the main resistance will be over here. But there is also a bigger problem behind the Russian advancement in this sector, and I believe I know how Russia managed it. They have a special tool which before Ukrainian army only had. But before we speak about it, let me tell you about my partner of this channel and also my sponsor. Yes, it is the Atlas VPN. They have the super deal that was especially made for my followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium just for $149 per month plus 12 months extra. Astonishing deal and it's the best one from all of the Premium VPN services. I'm staying with Atlas VPN for already two years and I'm always satisfied with this product. Using the Atlas VPN I may change my virtual location and may call from any kind of country as well as Netflix. Some of the content is not available for some of the countries so using Atlas VPN may open you new borders for the streaming services as Netflix. And by changing your virtual location on Atlas VPN you may purchase the airline ticket with great discount as well as booking apartments for your holidays somewhere. And now my friends please check out my personal link or scan the QR code available on the screen here where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium just for $149 per month and you'll have 12 months extra. Astonishing super discount is valid just for my followers so hurry up to join the club. All right, and now I'm gonna tell you what tool does the Russian army nowadays have? Starlink. Well, those photos were shared today in the internet and clearly this is the Russian camouflage. We may see it over here, hopefully you can see. And uh, this is really Starlink. There are at least two in this box and we have one more. And this photo also was shared. It is said as the Russian position. You may clearly see the Starlink antenna and probably it's the Russian position, but I'm not really sure. There is information of war ongoing between Ukraine and Russia, so we have lots of the disinformation coming. However, this picture is really warning. Again, Russian uniform. And here we see the sticker. The name is Hrubke, which means fragile. Hrubke, it's only in Russian. In Ukrainian, it will be Hrubke. Hrubkoye over here and Hrubke in Ukrainian. Yeah, here we may see fragile and the sign of the broken glass, usual marking on every fragile package. But again, Hrubke, it's in Russian. You'll never meet those kind of stickers in Ukraine. For sure, this is package 
that was delivered to Russia. It means that with a high probability Starlinks were supplied to the Russian army and the coverage of Starlink is increased, expanded towards occupied territories. Here we see the coverage of the Starlink, you may see that it's valid on occupied territories. Plus we have the information that the speed of internet for Ukrainian army using Starlink terminals was reduced to minimum. This is the screenshot done by our soldier. He says there are no any obstacles around, everything works fine, but the speed is very, very low. If you check the Russian websites, there you can actually purchase Starlinks. They are very expensive, but still you can buy them. The problem is with area, the coverage area. It is now extended to the occupied territories too. One more photo of the Starlink antenna was shared today from the Ukrainian channel stating that this is the Russian position. It's hard to cross-check, but original is Ukrainian sources. Something tells me that Elon Musk is directly involved into this and this case should be prosecuted with him personally. Let's check out a 3D map. For today there was no update and here we have the flat terrain in this sector and we are now sure that Russians are already in this place, so one building away from the road. Because of this very hard terrain for Russian army, I'm sure that they are advanced just with infantry forces, maybe a couple of vehicles, infantry vehicles were used for that, not more, no any tanks, nothing. So maybe they are just temporary here if Ukraine organizes the counterattack. However, I don't think that Ukraine is capable to do it right now. So probably Russians will continue to assault, trying to cut the city and reach their group, I would say, over there. And for today, the distance between Russian forces is 4 kilometers, 2 and half miles, so not really far away. Does Russia has any chances to encircle the Ukrainian army in Avdiivka? Yeah, obviously there is always a chance, but I think that Ukrainian generals wouldn't let them to do it. However, there are still three possibilities of encirclement, two small possibilities and one big. Russia may assault from this part and also from this part, encircling Ukrainian group over here, but I don't think that this scenario is real because here we have the urban environment in Avdiivka and Russians really stack with this assault vector. The other possibility is over here, but again this attack stack and here Ukraine has lots of the minefield, so it is a big question for the Russian army over here. I'm sure that they will not be able to do it and the biggest achievement possible for them is to encircle Ukrainian group in all of this right hand area. But again there is no any kind of the attack from the Russian army from the south. They tried to advance recently but that attack for the Russian army was complete failure. They lost many of the vehicles. That is why they have the only successful vector in all of the Avdivka and it is over here. Maybe after the Kanda supply road to Avdivka something might change. But for today Avdivka is still under control by Ukrainian forces and I don't see the close perspective for Ukraine to withdraw the army from this place if we have the another alternate supply road. If we go just a little to Nevelsky, you will see the Russian advancement in this sector. So let's check the timeline. It was yesterday and it is today. Before there was successful Ukrainian counterattack, However, it was countered by the Russian advancement. Yesterday, Russia lost a few of the tanks and BMPs near to Vuledar, but today they decided to advance from this sector because on the south, Ukraine has defense lines, so they're trying to come now from the east. It was yesterday and it is today. So their idea is to advance to Vuledar now from this place. I don't think they will be very fast with this because there are lots of the hills and terrain is not good for advancing with vehicles or tanks, but they could advance with infantry forces only. However, those are not enough to take Vuhledar town under control. Near to Robotina we also have the expansion of the grey zone. It means that the fight is very intense in this place, so it was yesterday, it is today. However, we know that yesterday Ukraine advanced in this sector just a little towards Novokovivka. So we see that Russia is using their massive resources nowadays, trying to take initiative on the front lines. 
Mostly, they are already breaking the situation in their favor, especially if we speak about Avdivka. For sure, it's just a matter of time that they occupy this town. They are using this gap, then Zaluzhny was removed by Zelensky, and General Sirsky just came to his new duties. Russians themselves call this time a golden time for their advancement. Well, we'll see how it goes. Ukraine still has lots of the villages around, and Russia wastes lots of the sources just sorry resources just to occupy Avdivka. Thousands of people were lost for the Russian army, hundreds of vehicles. So what is the prospect for their further advancement? Did they think that Ukrainian front lines would just collapse as it happened to them in 2022 in Kharkiv Oblast? Well, I don't think so. Yes, there is the light probability that it might happen, but not as severe as with the Russians over here or in Kherson. All of the picture on the front lines now depends on the Ukrainian resources. If we have enough resources, our army might stop Russian offensives in many of the points. But if Ukraine wouldn't have enough weaponry, Russia will start one more big attack towards Kupensk. I'm sure about it. There you see already concentrated lots of the forces in a very small direction and they're ready to strike I think across this road or towards those lakes. Also they will finally try to occupy Sinkivka and later on the way to Kupensk would be mostly open for them. It is really hard now for Ukraine to resist but believe me in 2022 it was even harder. Meanwhile Ukraine continued to target the supplies for the Russian army mostly trucks or ladders, Lada Niva for example and this is Kamas that was caputed with a drone. So lately Russia started to lose lots of their supply tracks and even fuel tracks. Everything of that is possible with the help of the FPV drones and Russia uses different kind of the transports. Here we may see even antenna was targeted. Russia continued to attack Ukrainian territory, this time Kharkiv Oblast. Many of the buildings were under the Russian fire. Unfortunately there are some of the losses family with three of the kids was killed by the Russian drones. And NATO Secretary Stoltenberg today said that NATO, the alliance, should be ready for the long-term confrontation with Russia, not just for a few years, but could be for decades. It is really worrying and from what I see, a Russian regime is not willing to change and people in Russia are not willing to change their leaders or management. There are no any huge riots, but at some moment I believe they might happen, but not in a short or even in middle perspective. It means that Russia will stay aggressive towards its neighbors, especially Ukraine. My friends, I recorded a very long video, it's 3 hours and 52 minutes about the breakdown of the interview which Carlson took from Putin, the main outcome that Putin is basically psycho, but I encourage you to watch this interview. I'll put the link in the video description just below for you to check it out. I think it could be interesting. So not just the interview you will see, but also my comments on topic and you'll see that Putin, Putin is just crazy. <laughs> I spent all the day filming and editing this video. It was kind of hard job and I know that I'll not have many views on this one, but you know, I just like to review this stuff and share my own comments, my own thoughts. So again, I encourage you to check it out. Russia is assembling lots of the Shahid drones. Mainly they are coming from Iran and getting assembled in Russia and later on Russia calls them Giran drones. The Russian offense minister Shogu visited one of the factories where those drones are being assembled. Probably from what we see those are not really Shahid drones, kind of small for them, I would say five times at least smaller. They are also called Giran probably, plus at the same factory we may see the Lancer drone production. Russia really has lots of the drones in their own production and also they are buying from other countries like Iran. Speaking about the middle range drones, Russia here wins unfortunately, but Ukraine has many more of the FPV drones. 
and also many more other types of the drones in development, but Russia is already on a big scale production. From the technical point of view, Russian army is not what it was in 2022. Now they are more focused on equipment for the simple soldiers. And you see how advanced this rifle of the Russian soldier is. No more rusty Kalashnikovs. However, if there is mobilization in Russia, obviously there will be more rusty Kalashnikovs delivered because this is exception, I might say. But in general, Russian army improves from the technical perspective but still they are losing their vehicles and unable to produce them very fast. Ukraine in its turn has a massive production of the drone boats. Just look at this hunger. Many of those were produced and already used by Ukrainian armed forces. Here we have the video of those vehicles or drones on the sea. Awesome. I shared this video on my Telegram channel. Here are some of the subtitles. Let's watch it. Here is the Russian captain of this military ship equipped with missiles and he's saying what he might target. Let's go. Скажем так, точности наведения, ну там буквально сантиметры. Сантиметры? И это касается в том числе и циркона? Циркона, да. То есть если стоит перекрестие, можно вот как снайпер попасть в перекрестие? Практически да. Если вот стоит пятиэтажный дом, то мы прицелим. Five story house and we are aiming at the entrance. You see, they admitted that they target Ukrainian civilians in five story buildings. We have many of them in Ukraine, by the way. The Russian military are the war criminals. About the military support of Ukraine from the United States is gonna be a long procedure, and the result we'll see. I believe on 13th of February, sorry, on 14th probably, this Wednesday. And some of the senators refused to support Ukraine. For example, this, uh, I don't want to call bad words. Well, let's say Rand Paul says that he will never vote for any money for Ukraine. Well, it's up to him, but he will not be elected, hopefully, in the future. There is the video shared in many of the publics, mostly pro-Russian publics on X, for example, showing a person in Ukrainian camouflage, I may say, and this person has a Down syndrome. On this video, this guy tries to put mine in mortar, but in the different, with a different side, let's say, with the wrong side. And the guy who's filming is very angry about it and start to kick him just a little and swear at the same time. Well, I want to say that 100% Ukraine is not hiring disabled people into the army or people with a Down syndrome or any kind of the syndrome. The only exception is if they want to serve in Ukrainian army. I think that this video is fake. It's my own perspective. Those are my thoughts because of the speech of this operator. All of this conversation and swearing looks very unnatural. I may understand it because I'm Ukrainian myself. I know how people swear. And on the video we see nothing but this guy without any proper patches. And what we also see is the mortar and guy tries to put mine with the wrong end into this tube. What is also strange that I would never wear a rubber boot during the winter time. The Ukrainian army has quite nice winter boots. However, this video could be real, but I give just a small percentage that it is like that. According to the Washington Post, the Ukraine planned attacks on Russian forces in Syria. The document was leaked to the press. However, later on, Vladimir Zelensky halted the operation, saying that it's better to concentrate on Ukraine, probably. And recently, Ukrainian forces were deployed in Sudan, from what I understood, and they attack Wagner mercenaries out there. There were some of the videos published, I am unable to show them over here, but probably I'll share them on my Telegram channel. The link for my Telegram is available just in a video description below. France officially confirmed that they will supply many more Caesar artillery systems to Ukraine. I mean dozens of those systems, 
plus artillery shells. It was confirmed today during the conversation between President Zelensky and President of France Emmanuel Macron. My friends, don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot. And also please check out my personal link in the video description just below, where you may find the Auto Supreme Premium with a huge discount that was made especially for my followers. As always, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.